Apostle Rob Wallace. Uh, this is back, uh, the last one, and uh, the fight was intense. And uh, so there was these younger kids, and they were young kids. They were yes. in, like in their 20s. Yes. And they were prayer warriors. And they started praying every time we were there. And, and we would hear them pray in the rotunda. Well, yes. guess what? They decided to go to the basement. Yes. And I, I didn't even know this, but there's a huge basement under our whole uh, capital. Yes. And they found signs of satanic things going on all over there. And so there was there, there there's been like a control over uh, our capital. Can you imagine, yeah. Pastor? And then there was evidences of witchcraft going on up through the different levels. I forgot all the details, but that day we started praying, and they started singing. They worshipped. Yes. I, I think uh, I'm not sure, but they worshipped eight hours straight, yes. something like it that. Was. Yes. Maybe you remember time. more. Yes. Than, and they worshiped these kids. I mean, I don't know that I could have done that. Yes. But these kids worshiped and worshiped and worshiped. And that thing lifted. Yes. And and for some reason, uh, what I understood, those demonic things were gone. And then we passed the legislation. Yes. And it was a major victory. It was a major victory. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Soul Source Podcast. I'm sitting here with my good friend, Pastor Ruben Mendez. And he's the pastor of Iglesias. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> and um, that took a little bit of practice because I don't speak <laughs> Spanish, nor do I speak Hebrew, but I do know <laughs> Shalom. But um, yeah. they're doing a great work. And um, and the reason why we're doing this particular podcast is because the Lord has given him a great vision that he's been doing here in San Antonio. And I believe that all of you need to know about this and become a, I believe you're going to want to be a part of this as well. But before we get into that, I want Pastor Ruben to share with us. Um, what, how he ended up here and what the Lord has been speaking to him to this point. So, Thank you, Pastor Rob. And I want to say, Pastor Rob, you're doing a great job in getting these podcasts out, getting us praying, uh, the prayer focuses. And I want to encourage you all to stay part of it. Encourage our Pastor Rob by praying with him on these prayer requests. And uh, just keep doing it, brother. We'll, we'll, we'll be led as God uh, gives you these insights that we can pray with you. Thank you. But you know, uh, Pastor Rob, we've been here in San Antonio about uh, almost 15 years. We came, we started there at Iglesia Cornerstone, and we were there 10 years. Then we started our own church about five years ago. And of course, this city's gotten into my heart, my my blood. Uh, I, I just know this is one of the cities that God wants to do something extraordinary and spectacular. And so... Uh, we've come here to pray. We've come here to, to pastor people. We've come here to work with pastors and leaders to try to embrace this with the vision of God. But uh, let me just say a couple of things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's there sometimes there's things that identify a city or a family. You know, sometimes we'll say something about a family and we say, oh, man, those are stubborn people over there, you know, or, or whatever it is. Well, you know, those labels can be upon cities, too, and yeah. communities. And and when I came here, I knew there were some labels on this city. I won't mention them because I won't give glory to the enemy. Mm -hmm. But there was some labels on this city. And, and for a long time, I was troubled because I could see evidences of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've, we've been at it, praying, asking God to set uh, the captives free for his Holy Spirit to move. And do a work in this city. One of the things we did, Pastor Rob, and we did this uh, many years ago, and it was interesting. Uh, we decided to to, to fast, uh, and with our little congregation, and we got a bus. And uh, some of these people had never fasted before, mm -hmm. so they were like, "This was new to them." And then it says, "What is this about a bus around the city?" Uh, and, and we and I said, "Let's we're going to go around the city. We're going to pray for it." Mm -hmm. You know. And we're going to cry out to God. And we did. We we literally did that. And, and it was a beginning of something where you pray and identify the city. Of course, in San Antonio, for those outside of San Antonio, uh, we have this big loop. <laughs> we yes. have two loops. Uh, Houston has a bunch of loops, too. But we have two big loops. And the 1604 loop is is the outer loop that, that you can drive all around. And if you do it on a good day, you can do it in about two hours. So it's yeah. not your, you know, you're, you're driving a little bit. Yes. And it takes you out there, Pastor Rob. And it, you go to 
all the, the country, you see a lot of places. But our desire is to go around the city, proclaim blessing, prayer points, and then stopping at, at a few locations. Mm -hmm. not, not a lot, obviously we can't, but a few locations in the north side, the west side, the east side, the south side, and declare God's blessing upon this city. Amen. And and I, I know you have some other questions, but uh, I did want to tell you this one scripture. You know, when when Jonah was asked to preach to Nineveh, he rebelled at first. And some of you know the story. And he was hard hearted and God dealt with him very severely because there was a reason because God loved those people in Nineveh. Yes. And this is Old Testament stuff. So you got to see that God's love was so great yes. that he dealt with that prophet. He said, you get over there. Mm -hmm. Or you, 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 I'm going to make you get over there. I mean, just think about how that, the, the, the human side with God dealing with that man. But anyway, when he gets there, he, he does something simple. And Rob, I've always been fascinated with this. And, and, in, and it says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah a second time. Because the first time he didn't listen. Right. <clears throat> and a second time. And he said, Arise, go to Nineveh. This is that great city. It was a great city. If you study history, mm -hmm. uh, it was massive. Yeah. And then that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. And Jonah rose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. Mm -hmm. Think about that, Rob. Yeah. I, I, it could have been as big as San Antonio to walk from one point to the other in yeah, three days. Yes. However, they did it, and and uh, and Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, "Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown." So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest even unto the least. Yes. And the story is a total redemption, Pastor Rob. Yes. I mean, a city that, that got a hold of God. It's the same God. We, we serve the same God. And I often think, what could San Antonio look if all of a sudden we came together and we started praying and we started and, and doing what, what you've been helping us understand, praying for our children, praying for our schools, praying for the, for the military, the hundreds and thousands of military praying for the policemen, and this place have the fear of God in yes. it. And I believe it can happen, Rob. So in a sense, that's the short version of how this uh, vision, and we've been doing it, you yes. know. Sometimes, you know, we've filled up buses, and it's been incredible. We've had two or three buses at one time. So uh, we'd like to encourage anybody that might be listening. Yes. That's Rob. Well, you know, I was thinking because I went on the, the last one, and it was incredible. I mean, it was incredible. And you're praying, and you you be, before you go, you you're just wondering what it's going to be like. But when you get on there, and the people are friendly, they're loving, um, you're worshiping, you're getting to know new people, and then you're praying together, and you just sense the presence of God. Get on the bus with us for the Jericho Drive, San Antonio, on March 27, 2023, at 8 p.m. Join us, the intercessors prayer warriors, and anyone who just want to be in the presence of God as we get on the bus to pray, decree, and proclaim San Antonio as God's city. We will travel around 1604 to strategic landmarks and declare righteousness throughout San Antonio. You definitely want to be a part of this. The cost is only $10. You can find this event on Eventbrite. Now the cost is to cover the expense of the bus. And the bus will leave from Living Spaces right off 1604. The address is 4239 North Loop 1604 West Access Road, San Antonio, Texas 78249. You can also donate seats for anyone who can't afford to pay. God bless you. We hope and we look forward to seeing you there. And so I, I just thank you for allowing me to be a part of this, to be able to share in this, because when you shared your vision to yeah. me, and then when I shared it with my wife, we both just kind of ignited on the inside, like, man, this is something that we really believe that we want to get involved yes. in. Not believe, we know we're going to get involved Amen. in it and do it. And so even as you're encouraging people to do it, yeah. I want to encourage you to do it too. Absolutely. Because there are so many different issues and things that's happening in San Antonio 
And so I know you also, you've been on the wall about particular things. So I want to ask you, what are some of the things that has um, the Lord has pressed on you and said, Reuben, Pastor Reuben, I want you to get in this fight. I want you to fight this particular issue. What are some of those things that has been in you? <laughs> You're digging deep, brother, and that's okay. <laughs> but, you know, when I first came to this city, uh, and, and, you know, th these things, you got to look at the, the underbelly of it. Right. But, you know, th there was a lot of injustice to uh, many laborers in this city. Mm-hmm. And and I'm not talking about any social thing or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking of, be, of people being taken advantage of. Uh, and there was hundreds of thousands of workers that are not being taken care of. Yeah. And, of course, that was a sin the Lord showed me. And I said, yeah. I've never seen that before. Yeah. I mean, I've lived in Houston. I've lived in Denver. I've lived in, in here in San Antonio. I, I mean, Dallas. I've but the Lord showed me that is a thing. And I said, gosh, Lord, that is right. Mm -hmm. And then I began to see it. So I prayed a lot, you know, that, that God would, uh, you know, touch these people so they could rise out of the dust of poverty. And, and I, I remember our days with sister, uh, with our mayor. Uh, Taylor. And that, yes. Ivy Taylor. Yes. Ivy Taylor. <laughs> yes. And, and how she would cry out. And I said, well, we know what she's talking about mm -hmm. because she would, we, she would pray about that getting generations out of and it's it's a downward spiral it goes from one generation to another generation and they don't believe they can come out and they of course they need jesus jesus yeah. is the one that makes the difference yeah. so that's one of the things and then of course there's a lot of uh of the uh the i call them the carnal sins yes. drinking and and just all the uh clubs in this city mm -hmm. i mean most of us christians we don't have no idea what goes on yeah. in the in the heart of some of the parts but you know there there's there's kids that run all over uh the downtown area mm -hmm. uh, from bar to bar to bar to bar to bar yeah. i wouldn't have known this unless, but a young person told me about it yes. and they all get together and they're going to hit 10 bars or five and they get stinking drunk there's no purpose in it there's no future in it mm -hmm. they're just they're hurting themselves but where does that take us you know so we got to pray for the young people, mm -hmm. uh, for vision. Another burden, brother, and this is, of course, a burden across all of America, but uh, it's what's happening to uh, a lot of the young men between 16, 18, and 20. Yes. You know, they, they're they attacked all the day, uh, and so they're not becoming a man like they need to be. Right. And guess what they do? They, they fall into uh, this this world of of gaming you know they sit in their rooms yes literally sit in their rooms not you know everybody could play a game for 30 40 minutes no they sit in their rooms for a day a weekend yeah and they don't even come out of the room they they have their mothers i've had mothers cry to me pastor i i, I can't get him out of of his room and and the, all they're doing is gaming gaming and pornography gaming mm. and pornography so my friends uh, we have some battles, I mean, and there's more, but but yes. those are some that press on me that right. most people don't talk about. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, I was very unaware. I mean, I know that people get caught up in games. In fact, I remember I got caught up in a particular game. I won't. <laughs> you know, I don't want to advertise. Yeah. Nothing, nothing crazy, but, no, yeah. you know, it's just it's taking your time. Yeah. It's yeah. taking your time, and, and I realized I, I look up and I've spent two hours on this game. Yeah, yeah. And so I just really just deleted it off my phone because... Yeah. It's, it just takes up your time, and you yeah. could be doing so much more. And I do know, that, as you're saying, that the enemy is attacking the men. I mean, yeah, absolutely. if I begin to mention, you know, a lot of people think, oh, that's, just, that's not no big deal. That's not, but I'm even looking at movies now. Oh, yeah. You cannot, it's hard to find Oh yeah. Um, male, you know, Positive. heroes like, like, like we used to. I mean, yeah. they're like dying out now, all the movies, you know. And I'm not going to, because I don't want to sound like I'm talking against yeah. certain movies, but I am looking at where are the men? Where are the men role models? Yeah. My wife and I, we were watching uh, Good Times the yeah. other day. And <laughs> man, I just got a little bit emotional because <laughs> it's been such a long time that you can see a strong father. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a strong yeah. father. So it's With something good, different. firm authority, yes. but kind yes. and, 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 and directive, give directive. That's what us men are supposed to be doing. Right, right, right. And they're really taking that out and, and, and re, trying to restructure what really should be. 
So these are some real serious prayer points. That's another reason why I'm excited about getting on the bus so that we can address these issues in prayer. Driving around San Antonio, I believe this, and you know, I know the Lord put it on your heart, and I believe that it's not just going to be us yeah. on the oh, bus yeah. praying. I believe we're going to be accompanied by angels because this is the will, <laughs> of, will of the Lord. Amen. This is the will of the Lord. And he says, and it, it always sticks to my heart when we're praying, when Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's right. And we, when we came to Christ, he said, you're a holy nation, a royal priesthood, that we have the priesthood of Christ on us. In the Old Testament, the priests, they carried the presence of God. Amen. And so we're going to be carrying the presence of God around the city. Hallelujah. And we're going to be praying and decreeing his kingdom come on earth as, because we have a job to do. That's right. And that is to dig out. But if we don't do it, the enemy is he's just going to take That's it. That's right. And so um, where the, um, as you're talking about the things that's been on your heart, how have you seen the enemy attacking in other areas like in this city, just yeah. the enemy attacking. And, and I want to touch this uh, because, uh, first of all, uh, we want to create an atmosphere of prayer, which what you're doing with the prayer net. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't want to just say, uh, join us for prayer and let's all pray together and we'll feel good. No, 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 no. That's mm -hmm. the very, very beginning. I mean, we, we pray because we have faith. We yes. pray because we believe God will hear us. And, and and we pray not because we're goody two-shoes or we're better than anybody. No, we're the most needy of all men. Mm -hmm. And that's why we go to God to help our cities and our families and our communities. And that God could do a, a work in our city that's deep and that's changing and transforming. Mm -hmm. And so I want to say this. Don't disqualify yourself that's from good. being a prayer person or a prayer intercessor. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to call it. Don't disqualify yourself because all if you pray, you have faith. Mm -hmm. And if and if you have faith, you pray. Yeah. A lot of people said, well, I'm not a big spiritual person. Pray and your faith will start growing because you're praying to the true and living God. So I want to say that. And um, I also want to say this, that the Lord uh, put in my heart and my wife to go to all the capitals of the United States. And mm. we've done about 38 of them. Right. We got a few to do. but uh, And we go to these capitals and we pray in front of them. And we've seen America. And, yes. and I, I'm so glad I was able to do that, Rob. I've been, I, we've gone to, to Utah yes. and Georgia. We've gone all to the New England states. And we've seen beautiful, beautiful uh, capitals. And we pray and we feel the spirit, you know. Yes. So you you can pray, and this bus tour, or whatever you want to call it, uh, is for us to pray in faith, believing God to do something. But the great sins of our nation and of our time are before us, Rob, and yes. we've got to do something. Uh, you know, th there's things that offend us, but th there's things that offend God, right, you know. Right. Uh, and, and we have to be careful. Uh, what is our nation doing that offends God? It's bad mm -hmm. enough that it offends. We're offending each other every day, and and we're and there's some of that going on, a lot of that going on. Mm -hmm. But what are the sins that are, you know? And and abortion is high there because he that spills innocent blood mm -hmm. is guilty. I mean, we're we're guilty as a nation, and you know we we're, we're pushing back, and they're pushing back. But we need to intensify our prayer mm -hmm. that God will. Will release because that'll start bringing the blessing back, you know. Yeah. Because it, it, it works as a positive that now we're stopping uh, the multiple thousands of abortions that were happening. Now they're fewer, and God can move more in our nation. Yeah. And and then I, I also believe, uh, you know, this whole thing. It's hard to get into, but how we're treating our children, you know, yeah. the neglect of children. Yes. Uh, Jesus says, suffer the little children to come unto me. Yeah. And, you know, if you're a father or mother, uh, or if you're a grandpa, because sometimes if the father and mother are not there, the grandpa or grandma has to stop. I mean, you're called to help and minister to those kids of yours. Yes. I mean, yeah, you can have your career, but, buddy, the most important thing on your table is to take care of of your family and pray for your family and declare there was times when I was raising my five kids, brother, I was going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I wanted, I said, this is too much. 
And all I could do was pray. I said, yes. God, help me. I had one daughter that was in, in real need, and man, it was tough. But we got through it. Yes. And then another daughter that was dating some stuff, some guy, and we got through that. Another one that was engaged to yes. be married yes. to somebody that we did not want her to marry. Right. Well, she made a choice not. But it all took a lot of prayer. Yes. And I remember when pornography was getting on, and my son was, uh, he had his laptop, and and I remember that whole season was so scary for me. I said, man, pornography is so dangerous, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. And I remember <laughs> we got through that battle. Yeah. So I'm just saying, don't give up. Fight your battle for your kids. Give them the input. Be with them. Show your heart to yeah. them. I remember when you were talking about the trips and going down to Austin. I remember that one testimony that Martha gave. Mm -hmm. Remember about, yeah. I want you to share that testimony, if you remember. The that. one about the, the, in the basement. Yes. Well, this is going to surprise some of you from Texas, but uh, some of the uh, connections that we have, me and Rob, and they come from Houston and different parts, and they pray at the Capitol. And they're in Austin, our beautiful Capitol. If you've never not been there or haven't been there for a while, you should go and yes. just walk around and pray, prayer walk. It's powerful. And so we were there. And we were fighting some legislation. Right. There's new legislation on this new legislative schedule. But yeah, this we was, can talk about that, too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is back, uh, the last one. And uh, the fight was intense. And uh, so there was these younger kids. And they were young kids. They were, yes. in, like, in their 20s. Yes. And they were prayer warriors. And they started praying Every time we were there, and, and we would hear them praying in the rotunda. Well, yes. guess what? They decided to go to the basement. Yes. And I, I didn't even know this, but there's a huge basement under our whole uh, capital. capital. Yes. And they found signs of satanic things going on all over there. Mm -hmm. And so there was, there, there, there's there been like a control over uh, our capital. Can you imagine? Yes. That's, and then there was evidences of witchcraft going on up through the different levels. I forgot all the details. But that day, we started praying, and they started singing. They worshiped. Yes. I, I think, uh, I'm not sure, but they worshiped eight hours straight, something yes, like it that. Was. Yes, Maybe you remember time. more than yes. And they worshiped these kids. I mean, I don't know that I could have done that. Yes. But these kids worshiped and worshiped and worshiped, and that thing lifted. Yes. And, and for some reason... Uh, what I understood, those demonic things were gone, and then we passed the legislation. Yes. And it was a major victory. It was a major victory. In fact, and, and what, it said, the, 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 um, what was the legislation, it was d dealing with transgenders being able to compete with girls. The problem with that is when you pass those laws to allow transgenders to compete with girls, not only does it steal from the girls yeah. that they can't win the scholarships because oh, yeah. they're not... Um, physically able to compete with them, but it also put girls in danger, physical danger, yeah. as far as when it comes to wrestling sure, and, sure. or any type of sports that they can be in, you know, these girls yeah. can really get hurt. Yeah. And so I understand yeah. how transgenders can feel, yeah. but the physical portion, we need to protect our girls' safety. Yes. And so for that type of legislation to even be on the table blows my mind. And the reasoning for it, because I kept remembering the reasoning for it, well, you're going to cause them to be in a suicidal state because they can't compete. Now, we know that doesn't make any sense. Right. But these are the type of things that they're passing. Yeah. Well, anyway, these girls that they prayed, they broke all that and um, the legislation, and they they argued the, their point for nine, well, 12 hours or something like well, that. I D just Go to ahead. give this testimony, so Susan and I went there, and, and we were on the docket to speak. Yes. And so I, I believe we started sometime around 10 in the morning. I'm, I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Well, we went all the way till 10 at night, yes. and then all the way to 5 in the morning. Really? So you count the hours, and, wow. and, and I waited it out, and I got to finally speak. And, and I spoke directly yes. to, to those legislation. You know, and I say, well, you know, a father and a mother are the, the ones that you lead a father. But, but I don't want to get too far ahead. No, go uh, for it. I just want you. No, go for it. Share that. Yeah. Well, you know, a father and a mother are who God has called to lead and guide and care for their children. I guarantee you, 
if if something goes wrong with your child, whether it's some horrible disease or some terrible accident, you ain't going to have the school board there uh, taking care of it. You're going to be the one uh, crying at night with them, holding their hand. You're going to be the one going to the emergency rooms. They're, those teachers that are trying to totally control them and doctor take them away from you uh, in, a, in a sense, spiritually, emotionally, they're not going to be there. Mm-hmm. It's you're going to be there. Uh, and, and you know what? Your love is greater than anything. Mm-hmm. They will be a father, just a father coming in and saying, honey, I love you and I'm going to be with you and, and uh, I'm going to help take care of you. I mean, that will uplift a young girl more than anything. I mean, you encourage mm-hmm. your kids and you love on them and you promote them and build them up. I mean, and, it, and you know what? Once you start doing it, it gets easier. Yes, yes. That's, and that was great. And to the testimonies and everything that happened, yeah. we, we had the legislation passed that yeah. favored yeah. That favored us, favored us as believers. And we won. <laughs> yes. And, and there was something we all learned. Mm-hmm. We learned the bluff of, of the enemy. Yes. Because they made us feel like we weren't going to even be close to winning. They mm-hmm. made it look so ugly. Mm-hmm. But it was all uh, smoke screens, yes. you know, and, yes. and those smoke things that think you're lost. But no, yes. we, we know what we believe. Right, right. Anyway. <laughs> that's that's great. That's great. And so well, these are some of the things that we, because this fight isn't over. I no, mean, sir. Th- th- and that was the other thing that amazed me. And that's why we have to continue in prayer. Yeah. And then we also have to be con- um, be willing to act and to speak out too. Now, if that's not your thing, continue to pray for us. But yeah. those of you that want to get involved in the action, there is, trust me, um, we're going to be putting out information so that you can um, get involved in, and I put it this way, in protecting our children. Yeah. We got to protect our children. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm not ashamed of my age. I'm not old, but I'm not young neither. <laughs> But I'm 54. I know, I've lived more than half my life. Yeah. I so know. it's not about me anymore. No. It's no. about, and it's not, it's not, we have to fight for our children. That's I mean, right. And Jesus said this. He said, it would be better for a millstone to be tied around your neck and to be cast in the sea than to offend one of these little children. That's right. And so we have to protect them. So Pastor Hagee said, they're a third of what we are right now, yeah. but in the near future, they'll be 100%. Yes. Because we're all going away, and they're going to be here. Yes. So we need to uh, invest our hard time, money, prayers, yeah. everything in our children. Yeah, and if you can't do it for selfless reason, do it for selfish reasons. Yeah. Because they're going to be making the decisions whether to euthanize you or not when you get old. You know, they're going to be making those decisions. So we need to pray and um and um, do what God is calling us to do. So these are some of the things that we're going to be addressing, even as the Lord continues to lead Pastor Reuben as far as the prayer targets and the things that we're going to hit. I know we're going to be praying for the government. I know we're going to be praying for our children. That's right. We're going to be praying for parents. We're going to be praying for the education system, um, the police. um, That's right. The police department. And um, anything else that the Lord, we just want to cover, and I believe that God is going to see this effort that, He's first laid on your heart, and that is going to grow. All right. And you know what? Uh, we want churches to, to, to be able to find their place and their niche and do it faithfully unto the Lord. So we're going to pray for churches, too. That's right. That's, that has been one of our targets. You know, uh, San Antonio is known for big, beautiful churches and many multiple medium to small churches. And you know what? Every one of them plugging in with Jesus, getting it right, and uh, can can make a difference in this city. We're going to pray for our, our government officials, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for our mayor, council people, our police chief, our our uh, uh, you know the judges in their city, mm-hmm. uh, you know the the fire department, uh, on and on. And uh, you'll have a list, and you'll have some targets, and then we're going to be stopping at uh, at uh, about four locations. Mm-hmm. And they're going to meet us there with other people already praying. And so we're going to hit these locations and there's going to be worship. So it's it, it, it's a crescendo of, of unifying in prayer. And we're looking to God. We're looking to God yes. for this. You know, uh, our battle is, is of the Lord. You know, it's not flesh and blood, right. but it's of the Lord. And we can win this battle yes. and we have to win in prayer. It's amazing if you and your wife learn how to pray. Mm-hmm. You'll it, it'd be a big difference in your home. That's true. So true. That's true. 
And I want to say this, our goal, I believe let's say this, our goal is to have five buses. Hallelujah. That's our goal, to have five buses. And so uh, we're discussing it's probably going to be a minimal cost. Yeah, but we're not trying to get rich. We're just trying to cover the cost. Defay the cost. That's right. of of the of the bus, and then let's say if there's for some reason you just can't afford, but you just want to go. Of this, course, you know Pastor Ruben is not going to stop that. No, not at he, all. He's go already. We're already willing to go into our own pockets to help out, but we need help. And then this, let's say this. Say you don't want to get on the bus, but you want to be a part of it. We're not going to have a problem with. You know, you getting in the car and riding behind us yeah. with the prayer list and we're praying, stopping at the same stops or even meeting us at the, the yeah. stops. Oh, yes. Right. Sir. They yes, can meet sir. us at the stops, certain stop or a stop. We just want to pray for the city. Yeah. Amen. And I want to say this. Thank you, Rob, because, uh, you know, you're you're coming alongside to help. And, and there's others also there. But thank you so much because, mm -hmm. you know, you're. You're applying faith and vision, and we thank you for that. Amen. Thank you. And we live by grace alone. That's, that's right. That's why we carry Amen. this. Amen. It's by grace. It, it's him. It's about him. It's for him. And we're excited what he can do yes. when we get, turn it over to you. You know, those those uh, original apostles, they were meek men. They weren't very educated. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, they said, well, where did these guys get yes. their... But you know what? They were anointed by yes. God. They were loved by God. They loved God. Yes. And they were able to change the world. Amen. Amen. So, is there anything else you would like to share with us, Pastor Ruben? Well, I just, I'll tell you what. I, I just believe that uh, if you put a little feet, <laughs> a little action into, you know, those things that the Lord puts in your heart and like this kind of prayer, he will back you. He knows you're not perfect. He knew that when he, he died on the cross, that we were all destined to destruction. None of us have made a good stance with God. We're all sinners. And so by that alone, we know we can trust him and believe him. And so take that step. Begin to walk. Get your kids together. Pray with them. Get your wife and say, honey, I know I, I've never done this, but... Let's pray five minutes. Let's pray ten minutes. And, and then uh, begin to do it. And then join us for this prayer. And let's our faith come together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we will get the um, more details out to you. Just keep your eye open for it. And thanks again, Pastor Ruben, for sharing. Thank you for joining podcast. And if you own a big bus, yes. let us know about it. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. Break the bus along. Amen. <laughs> and we'll get on your bus. Yeah. Amen. So, yeah. But thank you, Pastor Thank Ruben. you, Pastor Ruben. God bless you. Well, thank you again for joining the Soul Source Podcast. We love you. And I look forward to sharing with you on the next episode.